So last time we got the fast lift pump installed and the fuel lines kind of ran just a little bit. They're not permanently located yet. But if y'all hadn't seen that video, click on the little tag up in the top and that'll take you to the last video. Between then and now, I actually got in the parts that I needed. This is a push lock to an 8AN fitting and just an 8AN male to 8AN male with a little valve on it. Uh, this little MPT fitting doesn't quite fit in there. Let me see, there we go, now it's focused. This little MPT fitting doesn't quite fit in there, so I do have another MPT plug coming in. Hopefully it works a little bit better. We did get in our new fuel tank pickup tube, and we will be mounting that to uh, the top plate of the fuel tank here. I think the plan is gonna be to mount this where the fuel tank vent line used to go in, and I'll drill another hole for the fuel tank vent line, but this just lines up perfectly with you can see down in there, it lines up perfectly with the box that's down in there. Um, so the pickup tube that's gonna go on this will fit down right into that box. My plan as well is to drill another hole back here for the uh, return fuel from the engine to dump and hopefully that'll be dumping outside that box. That way we don't just keep picking up the fuel that's come from the engine back up through the lift pump and right back to the engine. Now using this, we actually do have two holes in the places where the old pickup tube and return line used to be. So I'm going to try to find a plug that goes into the old return line location. And the old pickup tube location, I'm going to see if possibly I can drill that out for the new vent line location. So we're going to go ahead and remove this fuel sending unit. Um, really just to get it out of the way so we can work with the plate a little bit easier. It will be going back in the same exact location as it was before. So now let's see if there's enough room right here to actually put our fuel tank vent line back in. If not, we'll have to try to find a plug for that and put the vent line back over on this other side. We went ahead and drilled out the new hole for the fuel tank vent line to fit into. That was drilled out with a 1 and 5 16th inch hole saw. Uh, we went ahead and connected the new pickup tube head here. We actually had to drill that out just a little bit more too, about a 16th inch more than what it was before. Then that was able to fit in as a lock washer and you tighten that down on there. This pickup tube here is actually a cut to fit. So right now it is a little bit too long. So in order to trim down that pickup tube, you want to support both ends of the fuel tank. This allows for the bottom of the fuel tank to actually go to full droop and there's not tension on it. If you don't let it do that, it'll actually push up in that center part. And so whenever you cut the pickup tube to the length that you think it should be, well, it's actually gonna be further off the bottom whenever fuel goes in it because it's gonna push that bottom down further. And so you're gonna end up with maybe a few gallons or something that's in the bottom of the tank that's just gonna be not usable ever. So now I'm gonna find something, the width that I want this to be off of the bottom of the tank. I'm gonna stick it down in that box that's down in there and then get to trimming. So I'm gonna use this piece of cardboard. It is an eighth inch thick throughout it. I'll also be able to tell if there's too much pressure on it because it'll probably try to leave an indention as well.
So we now have everything loosely mounted up over here. The plate's still not bolted down. I just have a brace underneath holding the fuel tank up actually in here right now. So next thing we got to do as well, I'm going to need to drill the hole for the uh, engine return line. Uh, I'm waiting for a bulkhead fitting to come in for that. So I'll wait to fully mount up everything until I get that hole drilled as well. But I also have a fuel cooler coming in that's going to go on the radiator stack up there. It is going to actually just angle off of this, go up through the cooler, come back and back into this return line and then that will dump into the tank. Uh, the original truck that this came in did have a fuel cooler so I'm going to go ahead and put one on this as well. It's just going to keep the temps down on my fuel in the tank and hopefully just make the pumps run better. So next thing that we're going to work on while we're waiting for those few little parts for the fuel system to be complete. I'm going to remove the turbo. I have a new turbo that's gonna go on this and we're gonna kind of change the way the lines are run. This little feed line is actually gonna run to a different location on the engine. Uh, it should be cooler temperatures than what this is coming from. Uh, right now it actually comes from the valley which is already used oil that, through this engine. So with moving that location, it should be cleaner and cooler oil going into the turbo should help my turbo run better uh, last longer just just keep it cleaner overall now whenever i remove that i'm going to go ahead and remove the intake as well here i want a good view of the back of the cp3 pump that's up front here it's the mechanical pump for the engine for the fuel it's what actually supplies high pressure fuel through these lines now after getting the standalone harness for this engine, went ahead and started and run it just to make sure everything worked fine on it before I went ahead and threw it in this frame. But after shutting down the engine after it ran for just a little bit, overnight I would notice that there was a seepage of diesel into the valley. I believe it's from the return line that's going into the CP3. But when we take that intake and turbo off of there, I'll have a good view of it. And I'll go ahead and charge up the lift pump, which will put positive pressure on it. And hopefully that'll show me any leaks that's on there. I am going to go ahead and replace the fuel line clamps that are on there anyways, since I'll have access to them again. But I'm really hoping it is just a line linking on there and I'm not going to have to look into getting another CP3 pump for this.
so after I got that turbo and intake off of there, I went ahead and tried to trace down that leak that I had around the CP3 pump. I think I got it figured out and got it fixed, but let me show you what I did. So I needed to test out the lift pump that I just installed and make sure it was working right. But at the same time, I needed the lift pump to supply positive pressure up to the CP3 pump up here. So I temporarily wired this up to be able to supply power to it and kind of jump it to run for a while. So while jumping the lift pump, I did find I needed to actually get the lift pump to fully flow first for a while, just so it got all that fuel into the pump and everything was working fine with that. Now, whenever I was doing that, I also came up to check the CP3 pump and I did notice there was some fuel in the valley, but there was some fuel up near a fitting on the top. It was not around the high pressure fitting on the top. It was around the return line that was up here, this rubber. So the original type of clamps that are on these rubber hoses are these squeeze type clamps. They kind of spring back. I don't have too much trust into these. If they've been worn too much, they don't actually supply enough pressure. So these were the first things I wanted to look at and try to replace with the worm gear style clamps. So once I replaced these on the hose, I went ahead and tested the system again a few times using the lift pump. And I was not getting any fuel up near the fitting anymore. However, it seemed like I possibly had a little bit of fuel still getting into the valley. So the last time I tested this, I did not see any fuel leaking out around that fitting and I didn't see any more fuel in the valley. So I'm hoping that ended up fixing everything. So we are gonna work on getting this all back together and putting in the new turbo. And of course, if this leaks later on, once we get everything connected back together and running again, well, we'll make a whole nother video on replacing that CP3 pump. But I really don't wanna buy another one of these, so hopefully it doesn't come to that. So I was hoping to get the new turbo put in today, but it looks like we're not going to be able to. I ended up having to order a new oil drain tube for the turbo. This one is a little beat up and kind of squished in a couple of locations. I don't want it to affect the oil flow, so I went ahead and ordered a new one. We're going to put it on here before we put that on the engine. We are going to still try to do the remote uh, location for the oil feed though. Uh, that way we do have cleaner, fresher oil to go into the turbocharger and hopefully the turbocharger will last longer and run smoother. So we did not get as much done as I was hoping to in this episode, but whenever we get those parts in, we will get this thing put back together and wrapped up. Thanks for watching Toss the Wrench. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see y'all next time.